Hello again everybody, uh, my name is James Sainsbury and I'm here today for the South Downs National Park doing a short tour of the archaeology at Changsbury Ring. Um, now a little while ago we saw Sisbury, which you can see right in the distance over there. That's just about visible, you see the curve of the hill. Uh, and as I said today, we're going to have a look at Changsbury Ring. So we're not going to do this chronologically because we're actually going to look at the archaeological features as we come across them. I've come up from the south, from Sisbury Way, and then we're going to walk across, sorry of course the wind is strong again, we're going to walk across Changsbury itself towards the upper end where there's another cross dike. We're going to start at this cross dike here. Now what is a cross dike? The cross dikes are quite enigmatic features. They probably belong to the late Bronze Age, early Iron Age, and they're basically big ditches that are cut across saddles of hills. Um, this one at Changsbury, most of it's gone, that's why I'm walking away from the main track because you can't really see it on the main track anymore. It's been destroyed by various processes, a lot of it agricultural or uh, training during World War II, but you can actually see it in front of me now. You see this quite ephemeral ditch. This is part of a larger ditch, this is part of the cross dike also known as a cross ridge dike because they, they cut across ridges on the downs and now they're probably used to actually demarcate land within a tribe. So this is as populations getting larger during the late Bronze Age, early Iron Age um, and land division needs to be a bit more obvious to people. Uh, and it doesn't look like much today but this is you know, nearly a 3,000 year old feature. Now we say they're late, Iron, late Bronze Age, sorry, early Iron Age so around 800 BC. It's very difficult to date these features. Quite often there's no pottery uh, in the fields when they're being excavated, so it's hard to tell. But that's not true of the cross dike on the other side of Changsby Ring. We'll come to that near the end of this short little tour. So I apologize for the wind again. Changsby is a very exposed site. You can see it over here. It's nearly 800 foot up, so it's nearly 200 foot taller than the highest point of Sisbury. And even though we don't have terrible weather today, like for the Sisbury walk, it is going to be windy, but I'll try and get into the trees um, and then get out of the door soon. Except for the road itself, one of the interesting features of this thing is part of the small castle down there. It's the area that some are more obvious than others. Changsby's become it's always been popular. It's got very popular the last year during lockdown and COVID, etc. People are looking for fresh air and new places to go. Uh, unfortunately, and this has been going on for a number of years, some of these burial mounds are very ephemeral and they're actually being damaged by cyclists and horse riders because uh, they use them as jumps, especially cyclists, not all cyclists, of course. And I'm sure the people who do it aren't doing it deliberately, they're just maybe not aware of what they're, they're actually cycling over. Um, for example, burial mounds on the walk up. So this is one of the main, this is the main trackway to Changsbury. Now it's called Changsbury Ring because of the, the earthwork, circular earthwork, so actually the trees are going up and down. And no more touch with the social history of the site with the little off barrel. So I've got a little bit of sunlight now, just about to start making out some clumps and bumps as we walk over them. Now this here, for example, just ahead of us on the right, to get it now, just there. That is a burial mound, though you wouldn't know it unless you've read the archaeological reports. It's very ephemeral, it's, uh, it's been spread, and of course the main trackway has gone through it. So a lot of this has been done by tanks during World War II training. But we're actually looking at it now, and you can just about make out the edge of it. See, as you come around here, this is the edge of the burial mound, and it comes around. Now, a lot of these burial mounds were excavated long before the modern period, and there's some uh, some nearer the ring itself, which uh, Pitt Rivers excavated, their old friend Pitt Rivers, who did work at Sisbury. Um, there's a couple more along this, this stretch. There's another one here, you see, just in front, where the ground just rises slightly. So at one point, these would have been quite substantial, but they've been slowly denuded over the, over the centuries to the point where you basically can't make them out anymore. There's a potential other burial mound just in front of us here. So, Changsby Ring, it's part of the Whiston Estate. You can just make out Whiston House at the end of my finger down there. We're looking over towards Devil's Dyke, Alstonbury Hill, etc. to the east. 
and obviously the Great Weald to the north. Uh, and thankfully, as I said, it's a nice day today because it can be very, get very nasty up here during the during the winter and the late autumn. Uh, and you can maybe able to make out. I'm not sure if you can. I'll try and zoom in with the Isle of Wight in the distance over there. So it's very good views today. And as I already mentioned, there's Sisbury. It's that dark mass just here, that Sisbury ring. Now, Sisbury and Chanxbury weren't contemporary with each other. Uh, Chanxbury is earlier than Sisbury in the sense of its earthworks, which we're approaching now. So Sisbury, as we talked about a little while ago, Sisbury is built around 2000, uh, sorry, 250 BC. That's the earthworks and the, and the ditch that go with the, the ramparts. And the Neolithic flint mines there are much earlier, dating to around 3800 BC. But Changsbury here was certainly these ramparts and the ditch around it were thrown up in the early Iron Age. So this is probably around 700 BC, something like that. So nearly half a millennia before Changsbury was built, you have Changsbury, um, sorry, Sisbury was built, you get Changsbury being constructed. Now, what was Changsbury originally? I mean, we don't really know. It's been maybe about 15% of the interior has been excavated over the years. Much of that done in 1977, uh, and very important excavation done by David Rudling et al. in 1988 after the hurricane tore down many of these trees. Now, what's interesting about Changsbury from a, a social history point of view is that these trees were planted around 1760 by Charles Goring, who was a who lived in Whiston House, and the only trees that actually survived the hurricane and these ones on the outside. So the reason for that is, or well, probably the reason for that is, the trees on the interior, they're planted on very thin soil and in some cases planted on two Roman temples, which we'll, which we'll come to. So their roots then go very deep and they were lifted off, whereas the trees on the outside, they actually their roots go deep into the ditch and the rampart and they could hold on during those hurricane winds um, over 30 years ago. So we've just crossed here. You may be able to make out these different shadows in front of me. These are three, there's a set of three burial mounds here. Uh, they're known as Hluels. I'm saying that right, H-L-A-E-W. You see one here, this is really quite obvious. And the other one on the other side of the track there. These could be Anglo-Saxon burials or in burial mounds. This was during that pagan period when the Anglo-Saxons supposedly first arrived on these shores. Uh, I guess one of the ways we describe them now is the early medieval period, so it's probably dated to around 500-600 AD. And as you can see, they've got these dips in the centre. And that's true of most burial mounds in Sussex and probably around the country. This is where people, antiquarians, etc., have actually excavated in. They're looking for gold, they're looking for precious metals. Um, I believe Pitt Rivers excavated these three, and he supposedly didn't find anything. So there's the other one there, number one, number two, and then number three on the other side of the trackway there nothing was found supposedly. Um, this is a scheduled ancient monument, the whole of Chanxbury Ring is, so no excavations allowed, no metal detecting allowed. Um, and because of its popularity I've noticed this year especially, um, people have been camping here which again isn't allowed, but even more so people are making fires. Now that's a big no-no here because the archaeology is so near to the surface you actually end up burning and breaking uh, Roman pottery etc from this site. So um, Whiston Estate do patrol the area but definitely noticed a few fires. So what we're going to do now is just going to walk into the ring itself. So as I said this is probably this rampart and the ditch thrown up around 6-700 BC. The purpose we don't know, I mean it could have been a fortified enclosure. Um, the views across the landscape are unrivaled um, so it would have been good for seeing potential enemy tribes or raids coming in from the north or the, the east or the west. But again, there's no supply of water, similar problems we have at Sisbury. And, you know, it's uh, strategically, it's sort of out on a limb. What are you actually protecting if you were to build this for a fortified enclosure? Um, you know, it's, it's not necessarily the best spot for that. However, if you look at it in the sense of a, a stock enclosure, it would be perfect as you have your sheep and your cattle on top of the downs. You could bring them inside here, maybe you have some timber structures to keep them out of the bad weather during winter. Or, or a ritual site. And we know it became a ritual site in the Romano British period, and it could well have been beforehand as well. So I'm just on the, the east edge of the interior of the, the hilltop enclosure or the, the hill fort now. 
Um, and we're just going to move towards the center where the two Roman temples are. And I'll point out to you as we come through here, there is you know, Roman archaeology literally on the surface of places at Changsby Ring. It's a very special place. Um, regard, disregarding all of the folklore and everything else, it's a very special place. So where I'm actually standing now, we're near the summit, where these brambles are. This is the east wall of Temple One. This was originally discovered during the early 1900s. There were some excavations here. We actually have three bronze Roman keys in Worthing Museum, where I'm the archaeological curator from this site. And they're probably related to this temple here. Now it doesn't look like much, of course. We've got brambles overgrowing it, but this here, you just see this slight ridge. This is actually the east wall of the temple. And this was excavated extensively in 1988, 89 by David Rudling and his team. And you can actually see here, look in this, in this mud, you see oyster shells. Now these could be from Victorian excursions here. That did happen. We have diaries from people who stayed in Worthing to come up here. But actually look at the, the soil itself. Let's turn this camera around. That is Roman CBM or ceramic building material. So these temples were made of brick and they had tiled roofs and they had tessellated pavements. So that's the first temple and it's the, it's the normal temple, it's the normal temple design for a Romano British temple. It's a square in a square. Uh, the entrance was pretty much where I'm standing. So you'd have been facing towards the rising sun. And you have to imagine this site without the trees, though there may have been a couple of trees here and there. Um, the rising sun and the east is over here. So the temple door had actually shone into the temple door. Um, and this was excavated, as I said, by David Rattling and his team. Unlike the Romano British Temple of Maitland Castle in Dorset, very few coins found here. We've got pottery and brickwork and tile. There's over 12,000 coins found at the Maiden Castle site. Very few at this site here, but there has been something else found, and that was in Temple 2. Now, it's a lot less overgrown now than it is in the summer. Usually this is full of stinging nettles. The Temple 2 is just here. It's just beyond the summit. So Temple 1 is just in the center east of the ring, and Temple 2 is in these brambles here. Again, excavated by David Rudling and his team. Um, when uh, it had been seen before, this, this site, this building, but no one really knew what it was. They thought it could be Roman, but they didn't know the plan. Now this was fully excavated. It was shown to be polygonal. So it's quite a rare shape for a Roman temple. There's a similar one from Pagan's Hill in Somerset. What was particularly interesting about this temple, and I know we're just looking at a set of brambles here. We have to imagine it rising up above us into the trees. And just before I forget to mention, this first temple had red painted plaster on the outside. So we've got a bright red building on the top of the downs without the trees surrounding it. And if anyone is watching this is from Sussex, they'll know that Tanksbury is visible from much of the, well, much of the northern part of the county. It's a real landmark, probably the landmark on the South Downs, I would, I would argue. But this second temple um, was built of masonry again, but what's particularly interesting about it is over 80 pig skulls were found within. Um, now back in the, back in this period, so we're talking about 100 to 400 AD, it's difficult to tell the difference between a wild boar and a pig, but we think they're probably wild pigs or, or you know, semi-domesticated pigs. Now that's interesting because what we have at site and Mum from Court, which is well off through the trees over there nearer the coast, but again, still on the downs. And we have at North Farm, which is again in that direction, is two bronze boar figures or wild pig figures. We have over 80 skulls that may well have dawned the interior of this temple here. And there's that question of, do we have some kind of boar cult in this area. Now the wheel to your north would have been absolutely teeming with boar at that period. So there's an intriguing suggestion that we actually have a wild boar cult, a, a, a religious, a slightly different religious belief system in this area, or at least the, the, what they were worshiping. And as I'm walking through the center here, we'll just have a look again at the soil. And what we're looking at here, now that is very little of that is mud. That is actually Roman ceramic building material, this slightly orange hue to the mud, that's actually the plaster from the, from the Roman buildings. Now you can't take away anything from this site. It's a scheduled ancient monument. So if you do find anything, just leave it in place and, and call the Whiston Estate and maybe get contact myself at Worthing Museum or someone at the Sussex Archaeological Society. One thing
thing David Rudling and his team found in 88 was the remains of a possible Anglo-Saxon execution victim. Now, what they would do in the Anglo-Saxon period, especially after they became Christian, is their criminals would be punished, and some of them were executed, and they, their bodies would be placed right on the edge of an estate. Now, Changton itself, the actual village, is down, down in the Weald there. Um, there is a charter for the village's land, and it has Changtonbury Ring, though it describes it as the, the home of the Verm, which is like the, the dragon. So they're probably thinking of these ramparts as being a coiled dragon. They say this is the edge of the estate. So when he was excavating just beyond the, the entrance to the Temple One, so there's Temple One here, and just beyond the entrance, 25 meters, was an adult male burial. That was probably an execution victim, radiocarbon dated from I think the mid 900s to the, the very early 1200s. Uh, a similar find was made when they built the Rampion Wind Farm, which is on the other side of the Ada Valley over there. And they found an individual male burial right on the top of the downs at the edge of any known estate. Uh, and he actually had evidence of having been have his, had his throat slit that was actually cut in on his on his uh, back of his vertebrae and his forex. So we'll just have a little walk around here. I won't talk for a moment. You just just get the atmosphere of Chantaby Ring. Um, supposedly haunted. Uh, if you walk around the ring seven times backwards, the devil will, will give you a, a bowl of soup, which you're not advised to take. I think there's another legend that if you count all the trees, then you bring back Caesar and his army. It's a very special place either way. larger beech trees survived and um, there is a poem that Charles Goring wrote uh, when he was in his 80s he planted these trees or had his work with plant these trees as a, as a young lad and the poem I don't remember it word for word but it basically says how grateful he is he would still be alive to actually see the trees um, above his his country house actually grow to maturity it's quite a lovely poem you can find it online quite easily so what we're going to do now is just going to head towards the the other cross site and uh, a burial mound on the west side of the saddle of the hill here. And then we'll finish up by walking back into the ring itself. Maybe about 10 minutes or so. Very well known landmark in Sussex. People uh, talk about it even back into the early 1800s. You have to imagine when Charles Goring and his workers planted these trees, they would have found archaeology, but as far as I'm aware, there's no record of that. It's, it's almost certain that they would have done. You see here another example of unfortunately a fire being built in the ramparts themselves. So as we head off the Western Rampart into the ditch. You can just about make out in front of us, just to the right of those people there, is a quite large burial mound. Again, with a, with a dip in the centre where it's buried. Separated down with these precious metals. Quite often, archaeologists, when they very rarely get a chance to excavate one of these things, they'll actually find human bones and maybe with bits of bronze that the, the original excavator went in sort of tumbled back into the centre of the, of the original.
interesting side note is that this, you can't really make it out, but there's a valley below us just here. And it's got this really quite hidden by the shape of the hill. You see it going off in the distance. That's an actual well pot here. And there may be some kind of, there may have been a discovery of a Roman well there at some point which gave that valley its name. And then obviously a well here that supply water to the, the priests and the visitors to the temple up there. And of course we have no idea where these priests live lived sorry um, did they they must have lived nearby but how you know Roman religion that kind of religion would have been the gods that really lived in Britain so here we are at the large burial mound it looks like it's been excavated again you can see the dip in the center and the outer ditch has disappeared so usually with these features you actually have an outer ditch and that would be the soil from that is what they throw on most of these features, you know, they date to about 2000 BC, so they're, they're very, very old. Uh, many of them over 4,000 years old. And as we head towards the west, uh, we'll get to the, to the cross site here, but there was actually a, a burial mound a bit further on that was just destroyed during the construction of a dupont. And what they discovered in there was a female burial, see a, a chieftain or a high priestess of some description, because it's really only the important people that seem to be buried in these, in these mounds. And she was actually buried with a Wessex style bronze dagger. So she's a very early inhabitant of Bronze Age Sussex. Could well have been one of these, these enigmatic beak people buried there. Unfortunately, it was all destroyed during the construction of the Dupont, which you can just see. Just see where those trees are, are there. There's a Dupont that's where the burial mound is. Quite a shame that they had to build it in the exact spot of the burial mound. Seems to be the way it goes in Sussex archaeology sometimes. Salmington off the distance and of course the coast. Now Changsbury on a clear day like this where you can you can clearly see the the wind farm and the ships out to sea. You imagine this site with two or maybe at least one bright red temple with a tiled roof. You know people with sharp eyes back then would have known exactly where they were along the coast. And Changsbury from the coast of course what frames it is Sisbury Ring. Sisbury Ring sits in front of it and um, so you would have had a very good idea about where you were. We started with the eastern one, let's see how it, and we're certain that eastern one is, is as most cross dikes, it's probably late Bronze Age, early Iron Age, and it's demarcating a special area or a particular um, family's group of land within the tribe that would have lived here. Whereas this cross dike's a bit different. This cross dike's actually been excavated, or a small part has been excavated, and surprisingly, they did find pottery and dating evidence in it, but it was not Bronze Age or Iron Age, it was actually Roman. So there is an argument. This cross dike I'm just about to enter here was actually built during the Roman period. So we had a, a very clear demarcated territory for these religious happenings behind us. So it doesn't look like much here. That's of course where it goes across the tracks, but we'll actually walk up through the cross dike here. Here we are. It's so actually going up through the ditch of the cross dike now. You've got the banks on either side here. Gorse bushes growing within the, within the ditch on the, the bank flank. I say very difficult to get data given. So of course this could have been constructed in the late Bronze Age, early Iron Age, and maybe um, the Roman religious authorities here ordered it to be recut. Um, it may have been silted up. And there it is. So looking back at the, the ring now, the, the cross dikes are pretty much equidistant to the ring. So it is an interesting, an interesting placement and an interesting date given for this as well. So we're just quietly now walk back into the ring and have a little bit more of a talk about the, the temples themselves and what's been found. And that'll be it.
is a suggestion of a, a sort of Roman road coming up the side of the, the downs just here actually reaches up towards the the site itself that's never been proven but we do know that there's the the green sand way and we've got stain street over in the distance near Walker. the green sand way which actually runs all the way along the bottom here and heads off towards barku where rob wallace and david Millam and their their team discovered a whole new roman town um about eight years ago now and, and then that cuts down towards pevensey which is an important roman shore fort but that comes later in the, the romani british period than these temples do uh, you can see it's not just sitting here in isolation this was part of a living landscape where people would have used these buildings um, on a, we don't know how regular, but at least a semi-regular basis. But as I mentioned already, that that connection to the to the boar. So the Muntrum Court is just there, where my finger tip my finger is, and North Farm is just down here in the in the Washington Roundabout Road. Um, the both of the bronze boars are in Worthing Museum. We have one of the ones on display, the one from Muntrum Court. It does seem a bit too much of a coincidence that we'll have a. Uh, a temple contemporary with those with where those discoveries were found um full of pig or possibly boar skulls so that's that's really interesting incidentally if you want to find out more about chanksby ring uh, the best book i can recommend to you is uh, chanksby ring the story of a sussex landmark by janet pennington uh, she's a real expert on this site uh, even to the point when she can point out the stumps of the trees that were originally planted by Charles Goring. So it's definitely worth a look at that book if you're fascinated with this site. And I do run walks up here at the museum as well. Obviously I haven't been able to this year. Um, that's true of other Sussex um, archaeological sites as well. Hopefully next year. So if we look down towards the south again now, you have Changsby Ring, uh, sorry, Sisbury Ring, uh, just here. But if you look just to the east, there's a little hump there. That is the mighty Lancing Down. Now that also had a Romano British temple on it of the same design as Temple One at Chanctonbury. So in this small block of land between the Ada, which is just over here, and the Arran, which is just over there, we have at least three important Romani British religious sites. We've got Lancing Down, we've got the two temples at Chanctonbury, and we've got Munfram Court Shrine. And that's quite a large concentration for the area, which does suggest, you know, there was, it was these, these buildings, these sites were serving a, a large burgeoning population. And the land can support that. You know, the coastal plain is very fertile. We know there was heavy uh, settlement on there way before the Romano British period. And the Downs as well, there's two sites I've been excavating near Arundel on the top of the Downs. They're contemporary with each other. They're both you know, substantial Roman Romano British monasteries. As well, so I can imagine these downs weren't empty places of just sheep, they were they were quite heavily populated. So now we're entering into the ring again. See as the clouds come in and the Later on in the day, as the light fails, you can see why it's sort of it's quite a spooky haunted place. And here we are again at the, the site of the two temples. some substantial finds from Chanctonbury Ring in the Worthing Museum. There'll be some kept at Lewis as well, no doubt, where the Sussex Archaeological Society have their HQ. Uh, and I imagine there's some even at Pitt Rivers Museum in Oxfordshire that you can look at. But whether they're on display or not, I'm not sure. And we'll just stop, actually stop in the entrance. You have to imagine I'm shielded from the wind right now. I have Roman tesserae underneath my feet rather than beech leaves. 
beautiful red painted walls going off to the sides uh, and who knows what's going on within the inner walls that's still a mystery that as far as the documentary evidence is concerned we still don't really have a, much of an idea of you imagine there's some kind of secret um, ceremonies which only the priests can view so that's it for today um, thank you all very much for, for watching again I'll be on Facebook when this is put online uh, onto the South Downs National Park Facebook page I will I'll be available to answer any questions you have about the site uh, and hopefully I'll see you again for another another tour of maybe another famous Sussex landmark in the future thank you very much